Select your application. Ballistic engagement. Entrenching tool. Avionics trawl. Troll smasher. Stellar sextant. The list of names for this exotic scout rifle continue, but we simply know it as the Mita Multi-Tool. Hey, what's up, Guardians? TBL here, and today we're bringing you another exotic weapon review from Planet Destiny. This time, we're going to be taking a look at the exotic scout rifle, the Mita Multi-Tool. The Mita Multi-Tool is an exotic scout rifle sold by Xur, won from the Cryptarch, or received as a reward from PvP or PvE. It keeps true to its name in that it's a weapon that can be used in almost any and every situation. Its perks allow you to customize it to your playstyle, and overall, it's pretty fun to use. Its namesake suggests a versatility that helps it to handle a variety of situations, and for the most part, it doesn't disappoint. Its stats are particularly rare among scout rifles, and its niche lies in mobility. A strange role for a weapon class whose primary function is sustainable DPS at a greater distance. Now, a long time ago, scout rifles got a really great buff. They got their base damage increased by 6%, their damage versus combatants increased by 6% to 25% based on their total tier, and they got improved target acquisition plus additional recoil tuning, so better stability overall. And because of that and many of the other buffs and nerfs that have gone into the game's weapon balance, scout rifles are now a solid choice for both PvP and PvE. Now let's talk a little bit about the good and the bad of this gun. Alright, now here's the good. The Mita Multi-Tool has respectable base stats with a few notable frontrunners. Its rate of fire of 42 is unusually high for a scout rifle. The two most popular variants, to which the Satyrian Rapier and the Gellion's Demise conform, have 37 and 27 respectively, leaving the Mita a hair faster than those worthy alternatives. Now, with the quickest reload speed available, the Mita reloads practically instantaneously, completely eliminating the need for gear reload buffs or other reload perks such as Outlaw that are often required to make its competitors viable. In that sense, this thing comes right out the box ready to rock and roll. Its stability is not especially stalwart, but it is serviceable to handle its rate of fire without an unreasonable muscle climb even at the maximum fire rate. Magazine size of 21 or 27 with Field Scout is just enough to allow for prolonged fire when necessary. Now, as far as perks go, the Mita has a useful array that complements its role nicely. The third eye is very well suited to the Mita's mobility heavy profile, allowing Guardians to maintain constant radar uptime even when aiming down sights. This perk is especially excellent for PvP while being acceptable in PvE as well. Now the Midas third row options are a bit of a mixed bag, but there are some standouts. Lightweight grants plus two to agility in all circumstances, and again synergizes well with this weapon's main draws. Field Scout is also a viable alternative for those who want to never be able to let go of the trigger in PvE, increasing the magazine size to an absolutely insane 27 rounds, and providing extra reserve ammo. Now the Midas signature exotic ability boosts movement speed and lets the weapon fire on a hair trigger. This movement speed boost is very noticeable and applies while both walking normally and while aiming down sights. It's comparable to single point sling, but it's not limited to ADS in this regard. Now to really make use of this speed, try wearing the Radiant Dance Machines while using this weapon. For you hunters out there, it'll literally turn you into Sonic the Hedgehog. The uses for this perk are manifold, though an obvious plus is the ability to maintain speed in spite of Weight of Darkness stats in the Abyss and Crota's End. It pretty much trivializes the Abyss section of the raid. In addition to this, a fairly recent patch added Mita's very own personal High Caliber Rounds-esque perk. Every single bullet fired from it possesses the ability to stagger almost any foe. This is a really useful boon towards keeping a target locked down and pairs well with the Mita's flanking encouraging perk set. But alright, now that we've covered the good, let's take a little bit of a look at what we would consider the bad. Its impact leaves a lot to be desired, with nearly the lowest impact among other scout rifles. Although its naturally high rate of fire helps to compensate, you'll often be wishing for a bit more oomph. And now another thing is that the Mita lacks the highly desirable Firefly, and without it, there's no way to improve its trash mob disposal utility, and it will be outclassed in situations in which damage is paramount. Its built-in high caliber rounds helps to keep you alive when your damage is lacking, but it's still a little disappointing. Moreover, its range is a bit of an outlier among a class that prides itself in being able to handle enemies at a distance. 
Soft Ballistics does nothing to further penalize it, but it still comes at the cost of impact, which is a steep price to pay, even in marginal amounts. Now, both CQB and Soft Ballistics offer means of boosting your stability, but in return further reduce your effective range or impact to varying degrees. Unfortunately, this is unavoidable, and as Mida frankly shouldn't be used as a long-distance killer, we recommend Smart Drift Control. This reduces range the most of the three, but provides the heftiest boost to stability without compromising impact. It forces Mida into a closer range niche, but ultimately, scouts have enough base range to not be particularly troubled in most content even by a moderate nerf. The multi-tool is a gun that excels at mid-range combat, but still has some varying degrees of close range utility thanks to its multiple movement boosting skills. Now, quick draw is a rather odd choice for the Mida since it's kind of wasted, when the Mida's equip speeds and general agility-centric profile cause draw times to become mostly a non-issue. Essentially, the Mida is already fast enough on its own. Quick draw is kind of unnecessary. And although Third Eye is great for certain situations, it is by and large wasted in PvE content where the enemy's location is known and unvarying. Now, the hair trigger function of the signature perk is similarly underwhelming. PS3 users actually don't see any benefit whatsoever, and it does not increase the base fire rate. Merely the pressure required on the trigger to fire around, it's actually a really odd choice for a weapon ability. Now, the last bad thing about the Mida centers around its practicality. There's really just no reason to use it over other exotics like Icebreaker or Thorn or Hawkmoon. Well, save for the small niche sections and in-game content where you can really make use of the double speed boost this gun gives you. But other than that, what reason do you have to give up an exotic slot for it? Although to be fair, that probably can be said for about any other exotic in the game. Now let's take a look at the weapons handling in PvE. In PvE, the Mida mostly serves the role of a weapon whose job is to propel a Guardian through content quickly and efficiently, and it does this pretty well. Its signature perk and the hidden high caliber rounds work in tandem to limit enemy fire reaching you while allowing you in turn to lock down and rapidly dispatch potentially dangerous majors or snipers. Now, without Firefly, the Mida does lack the raw destructive power of some of its stiffest competition. Looking at you, Satyrian Rapier. But the high rate of fire allows it some leeway in this regard. You're gonna reach your objective swiftly, while maintaining high survivability on the merits of your agility and the ability to take cover at the drop of a hat. Although it isn't strictly weak in DPS consideration, if you're using the Mida to deal the most damage, you might be disappointed. However, PvP is a completely different story. This weapon is an excellent choice in PvP depending on your needs. If you're looking to frustrate your opponents by never sitting still or allowing a single enemy to get the drop on you, you'll be glad you chose it. Its high rate of fire and staggering rounds can swiftly ruin anyone's day who happens to be sitting out in the open. It combos really well with the Blade Dancer's natural agility and is great for any player whose MO is flanking or rushing. It is a bit wanting in terms of time to kill, you know, it's not going to be outscoring stuff like the Vex Mythoclast or the Thorn or whatever. But if you play right and you have sure aim, you'll see great success with the Mida. Alright, next up, let's talk a little bit about the weapon's cosmetics, since that's always a big part of exotic weapons. Now, the Mida was built to do a little bit of everything, and it basically took design elements from each scout rifle. Its scope resembles the typical scout range lens RLR5 slash RLS3, but with a reduced zoom factor of 2.0 for increased visibility in short range encounters. Now, its fire rate is distinctive, with a curt, suppressed whistle that suggests control and precision. Here, let's take a quick listen to that. Quiet and deadly. The compass on the side is similar to the one seen on the Suros regime. Now, early on, there were rumors of the compass pointing to treasure chests or upgrade materials, but these rumors have since been squashed. But all right, let's wrap this baby up with a nice, neat conclusion. The Mita multi-tool is a weapon designed to fill a high mobility playstyle, but it can also easily fit into anyone's loadout and really be used successfully. The Mita has seen its share of upgrades and has come out better because of them. It is an extremely fun weapon to use and versatile to boot. And although it suffers from damage output problems, it more than compensates with its staggering rounds and unreal speed, both in movement and in reload. You'll never feel lost in the battlefield, even if you aren't going to be wasting enemies in record numbers. In the end, the Mida multi-tool really lives up to the myriad of names it's earned for itself. 
It's a really great weapon that can benefit you in any situation. It's a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And regardless of your playstyle, I'm sure you'll find a use for the Mita Multitool. But alright, that's it for this one guys. Be sure to subscribe to Planet Destiny right here on YouTube and follow us at planetdestiny.com where you can find a ton more exotic weapon reviews as well as Destiny tips and tricks. We'll catch you in the next one. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.